All right, so I'm sticking with my uh, limited palette. I've got cadmium yellow medium here. Uh, there's burnt sienna, uh, lizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and phthalo blue green shade. Uh, this is a Utrecht color. I'm not that particular about the brands I use, just as long as they're like decent quality. This is uh, Windsor & Newton. One thing that's important when getting burnt sienna is you make sure that you get the right uh, color code and you can usually find the color code on the back of the paint tube. In this case, uh, it's PR101. All right, a lizard and crimson here. One thing that's nice about uh, having a limited palette is I seem to waste less paint. You know, if I've got a bunch of colors squeezed out, I'll, you know, I'll use a little bit of each and then they dry up and I end up wasting it. But when I squeeze out you know, five colors plus titanium white, I end up wasting a lot less paint. And some of these colors last a long time before they dry out. For example, Alizarin Crimson lasts a long time. Uh, Thalo Blue as well. Ultramarine dries kind of quickly, but I use it so much that there's rarely leftover. You can see that's from the last, last painting, barely any leftover. Uh, cadmium Yellow Medium also dries relatively slowly. Burnt Sienna dries kind of quickly, but I use that up almost, uh, you know, I'll use that up during this painting. So yeah, a lot less waste. Today I'm using uh, Windsor & Newton Artist Color for my Ultramarine Blue and Thalo Blue Green Shade. This is, uh, like I said, a Utrecht color. A little bit goes a long way. All right, and I'm using Titanium White from Utrecht, but I also often will use Windsor & Newton's White or Gambling. Uh, I'm not that particular. So I am at Surfers Beach in Princeton, California, or El Granada, California. Anyway, uh, I'm going to paint some waves today. It's been a while. One of my favorite things to do on an overcast day. Um, and I'm going to try to share my sort of color mixing philosophy with you guys. Yeah, there's a lot of grays to work with today, but I'm going to try to get little bits of saturation in there. Uh, but most of the time when we're painting landscapes, we are dealing with a lot of grays and I like to gray with compliments So I'm going to share that process with you I'm painting on an 11 by 22 inch panel today using liquid original as my medium And I've reduced my brushes down to these two brushes a number eight and number six uh, Natural bristle flat. These are both from Utrecht starting out with a burnt sienna sketch and I'm using an old number four uh, Natural bristle flat here often. I'll use a worn out number two um, But rarely bigger than a number four So I've got uh, the horizon at about a quarter from the top of the panel and then Using rule of thirds. I'll probably put like a wave You know the the main wave right here on the uh, on the third something like that and then I think I want to have a little bit of the shoreline included. Uh, in other words, like where the water meets the sand. And then um, maybe I'll look for like kind of an interesting whitewater pattern here and probably have some kind of secondary wave. Uh, or white water like in here, something like that. I try to keep these sketches pretty loose and spontaneous. Uh, just because, you know, everything's moving and, you know, so I don't want to be too careful about it. That's one of the problems you get when you paint the ocean from a photograph. You, you can get very uh, specific and too detail oriented when I find that just having kind of spontaneity and almost, you know, sort of chaos is much better. All right, first I'm gonna mix up a mid-tone blue-green, uh, and I'm gonna to try to keep this painting fairly high key. Uh, in other words, you know, maybe the darkest dark is a mid-tone, and my palette is a mid-tone gray, kind of a mid-tone neutral gray. And that just happened naturally, just over time from cleaning my palette. Uh, but I start usually with ultramarine blue and a touch of uh, burnt sienna 
And since the burnt sienna is kind of an orange color, it's the complement of blue. So it's a natural way to gray down um, the blue, but it also has some yellow in it. So it kind of, uh, you know, grays it down to being sort of a greenish color. And I also like to add a touch of uh, Lisbon Crimson into the mix. It's interesting how much red is actually in seawater. I know I've said that before, but it's true. All right, and then with this part of the painting, I try to work quickly, spontaneously, have fun. I got some unmixed blue on there, but that's all right. And I have thinned a bit with liquid. So for the sky, I'm using titanium white and ultramarine blue, and I'm graying it down again with burnt sienna. But I'm using a bit less burnt sienna because I want to leave this mixture closer to, you know, kind of a, a, a blue or purplish blue. I'm mixing a little bit of, uh, you know, lizarin in there as well. And you can see the difference between the ocean color here, which is more of a blue green, and then the sky color, which is more of a kind of a gray blue. I try to get the values as close as possible on the first mix. And, and also, you know, trying to get the color mixes as close as possible. But I'm not too worried about it because I can't really get precise colors and values until I've got the whole panel covered because, you know, painting is, it's all about relativity. And so, you know, in other words, color uh, comparing your darkest darks to your lightest lights, and then also, you know, the satu uh, saturated colors compared to the gray colors or the grayed down or desaturated colors. So number one is to approximate colors and cover the panel. Try to do that as quickly as possible. And I'm gonna try to mix up a yellow ochre color. I've mixed two oranges here to start off with. The one to the left I've used burnt sienna and cadmium yellow medium. And this orange here has got cadmium yellow medium and alyssarin crimson. All right, so now I'm adding a bit of titanium white. Okay, and mixing in some ultramarine. Uh, that's a lot more saturated than what I'm dealing with here, but I like to start with a saturated color and then gray it down. So I'm gonna grab some of the gray uh, from the ocean and from the sky to gray down this uh, yellow ochre color. And so sometimes I'll gray down using complements, but often when I'm using a limited palette, I'll just grab you know, a gray that I've already been using and then mix that into you know, whatever color I'm trying to mix in order to gray the color. And as I've mentioned before, I find that you get a lot of color harmony um, with this limited palette and then, you know, using the other mixtures to gray things down. That's a little bit closer to the, uh, you know, to the color we're dealing with here. And there's obviously some orange tones coming through, but again, uh, you know, I'm gonna be, uh, you know, I'm gonna be painting over this with thicker paint. Another thing I'm paying attention to at this point is just value relationships. So, you know, you can see here when the white water comes in, uh, there's definitely some contrast between the white water and the sand. So, you know, I feel like the value of this is actually pretty good, but it's just too saturated, too warm. So I'll be cooling that down later. Okay, so I'm mixing up a blue-green here using titanium white, cadmium yellow medium, and phthalo blue. The phthalo blue allows me to get a really punchy sort of aqua or blue-green color. Uh, and I want to use a very light version of this for the white water. Um, so first I'm mixing up a more saturated blue-green and then I will uh, lighten it up with some titanium white. Now I'm going to grab just a touch of alizarin because I don't want it to be too saturated. So I'm mixing in a little bit of alizarin because red is a complement of green. See how nicely it grays down the color. All right, adding a bit more titanium white spontaneously put in some white water here. Uh, and I try to keep the brush fairly loaded. Again, I'm thinning with liquid in order to be able to keep the uh, paint fairly fluid. All right, so I grabbed a bit of this orange mixture and mixed it into this blue-green here. I want some 
color out in the waves in the distance. And what I'm usually doing when I'm painting waves is I'm trying to make sure that, you know, I don't have like these straight lines. Actually, I feel like I want some dark areas of the wave, uh, you know, like say here where the wave is starting to peak up and there's some nice reflections. I'm gonna have to decide where I want dark portions on these waves, but for now I'll just kind of put in some white water suggest a little bit here. All right, so I've mixed up a dark green mixture here using ultramarine blue, uh, cadmium yellow medium, and then uh, I've grayed it down with a little bit of alizarin crimson. I'm gonna experiment with some dark sections of wave here. Maybe I'll have like dark over here. I think some people find this kind of painting challenging because you're you know more or less looking at the scenery and kind of using it as raw materials to create an interesting painting um, so you've got to kind of use your imagination like what i like to do is be spontaneous and then step back and see what i've got and then kind of work with the spontaneity that's there so if i look at this i actually like i like this little segment of white water here and I think it's good that this dark portion here is not quite in the center. It's a little bit off center. And then also that I don't have like the left hand side mirroring the right hand side. There's definitely some variety there. All right, I feel like I want uh, the angle on this wave to be a little bit steeper uh, so that it doesn't mimic some of the other wave angles. Something like that. Okay, I wanna put uh, a few suggestions of, you know, darker waves in the distance. You know, maybe over to the left here, and maybe, maybe one out here. There's always a shadow, you know, underneath the leading edge of the white water. And so I'm switching to the number six uh, natural bristle flat for this. And when I want to draw like a thin line, I just roll the brush onto its edge and you can kind of get a sharp, uh, you know, more or less of a sharp line. All right, I want to gray down the sand a bit here, especially where it meets the leading edge of the water. Uh, and it's kind of an orange, yellowish, you know, yellow ochre color. The complement of yellow is purple. So I've mixed up a purple using ultramarine blue and a touch of uh, alizarin crimson and I've added some titanium white. All uh, right, just scrubbing over this warm color here. So there'll be a little bit of color mixing going on. Uh, but it looks like I'm still getting a little bit of warmth coming through, which that's okay, I'm not, that's not a problem. It's nice to have warms and cools playing against each other. One of the things I've realized over the years is, you know, how important it is to be able to mix grays just because uh, most of what we encounter in nature is uh, grayed down quite a bit. There's not a lot of saturation. You know, there may be little pops of saturation, like I could put little pops of blue-green and stuff in the waves, but uh, for the most part, you know, everything is fairly grayed down. All right, so I'm gonna start building up some of the colors in the distance. I'm using a blue, uh, like sort of a grayish green, but obviously less green than uh, this wave here. There's a lot of the gray sky is reflected in the water. And I'm trying to apply these strokes, um, you know, with intention, so to speak, loaded and intentional strokes, mixing in a little bit more ultramarine blue for the horizon. And the sun is coming out, so the light is changing. And when that happens, I've got a choice. I can either sort of chase the light or go from memory and the way i decide is you know it depends on where i am in the painting if it's easy for me to you know quickly shift to the new uh, colors that i'm seeing or the new you know colors and values that i'm seeing then often i will do that especially if i feel like you know the new weather pattern or the you know the the, the new lighting condition is going to stick around for a while you know, if, it's, if I feel like it's just a temporary change, then I'll stick with my original plan.
All right, so now I'm mixing in some of this uh, warmer green color here that was already on the palette, mixing it into this gray blue that I use for the horizon area. Uh, this is something I'll often do, you know, is just grab bits of color and that I'm seeing on the palette that actually are what, you know, I'm seeing in the scene and then using those colors. And I've mentioned this in previous videos, but with this limited palette, I have not noticed any limitations whatsoever. And um, I have noticed that it's a lot easier to maintain color harmony. So, you know, already I'm really happy with the way these colors work with each other. All right, I've got titanium white and a bit of phthalo blue. I'm gonna try to stick to this value, um, you know, that I've got already established for the sky but I'm going to, you know, look for temperature shifts within the sky to make it a little bit more interesting. I may try to shift up the brushwork so I get a little bit of variety in the direction. Uh, it's, you know, kind of a blue color up towards the top of right along the horizon. Now there's a warmer bank of fog. All right, once again, working into colors I have on the palette, but I'm pulling a bit of uh, alizarin and cadmium yellow medium into a gray mixture here to kind of warm it up and I think that warm color works and with the Sun it's uh, getting a little bit warmer out here so the paint is actually starting to get a little bit tacky so but I can still kind of blur the edges a little bit which is good All right, so I'll just do a little minor cleanup. And I do want that hor the horizon to be a little bit irregular and not too perfect. You know, I don't mind using a straight edge, but I don't want it to look like I used a straight edge. All right, just making a random light mixture here, putting some of these uh, lighter strokes underneath the white water to suggest a reflection. Look right here and here. A little bit over here as well. Putting some darker tones underneath uh, some of this white water in the foreground. Maybe over here as well. Really light purple mixture here using ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and titanium white. And at this point I'm keeping the brush loaded and I'm gonna reinforce some of these lights. I want to be careful not to tidy things up too much. Mixing up the direction of the strokes as well. Ultramarine blue, titanium white, and a touch of burnt sienna. Adding a bit of sky reflection on the wet sand. And then also like a bit of directional kind of energy in the brushwork. I'm still leaving, you know, the warmer gray. It's nice to have the warm and cool play off of each other. All right, so I've got titanium white here. Titanium white and a little bit of a warm yellowish mixture. Again, just pulled off of the palette. And I'm keeping the brush really loaded at this point and having it kind of skim over some of the other colors. I want to keep the kind of minty green that I have to play against, uh, you know, this warmer yellowish white water. All right, so here is what I finished up with. I decided to stick with the foggy motif. Uh, the sun did come out for a bit, but then the fog rolled back in. I'm happy that I was able to capture some of these blues in the sky and then this warm fog bank. And actually, I think the colors in the sky really work nicely with the, um, you know, the gray green of the water in the foreground. So even though the foreground seems foggy and the distance has a bit of light, I think it really does work. Um, I'm enjoying this limited palette, you know, the five colors and titanium white. Uh, I feel like it's really easy to achieve color harmony. Uh, it's, I'm not having any problems mixing the colors that I need. And then also it's easier to set up my palette. I feel like I'm, I'm uh, wasting less paint. So it's really efficient and I plan to stick with this palette. Uh, 
until further notice. Uh, as far as values go, as I mentioned, I try to keep this painting fairly high value. You know, so this it's mostly mid-tones and lighter. Now these darks in here are maybe slightly darker than a mid-tone, but not much. This is one thing that I've noticed painting plein air seascapes is that I tend to paint them lighter. If I paint from photographs, I think the photographs tend to exaggerate the contrast and I end up painting the dark portions of the water far too dark. So that's why I started, you know, painting seascapes in plein air. And even though the subject is moving, I just feel like the results are much better. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. It's a Patreon support that helps keep me making these videos, and it's much appreciated. Uh, so like I said, link below. Check it out. Other than that, stay creative. I'll see you guys in the next video.